The heart is one of the most vital organs of the human body. It pumps blood through the arteries. It keeps us alive. Just like the heart, Lake Victoria pumps its water through the artery that is River Nile. Meandering through the basin countries from East Africa and pouring life in the land of the pharaohs in Egypt. It is the second largest freshwater lake in the world by area and the source of the River Nile. It is hosted by Uganda, Tanzania and Kenya. Today, this lifeline is on its deathbed due to pollution and hyacinth threat. Which way for Africa's greatest freshwater lake? Today, Lake Victoria is on its deathbed because of human activities. Hotels, industries, and factories pour effluent into the lake, while hyacinth keeps choking the freshwater lake. If it were not for the resources of Lake Victoria, my grandmother Monica would not have succeeded in educating her children. Like Monica, there is over 35 million people who depend on the resources of Lake Victoria, and the population is growing. A look at the image right before you, you'll be able to see how population has evolved over five decades. The red patches will show you up to a hundred people living in one kilometer square. Translating that pressure into the images you see below the evolution illustration is the pressure the lake is receiving due to population increase. Making the tentacles disappear on the lower side in Tanzania. And if you look at the tentacle into Kenya, which is 6% of the lake we have, it is covered by hyacinth. Now, let me tell you a story of my journey to here. In 2010, I took a trip down to my village in Siaya, in Alego, a county that is bordering Lake Victoria. And when I went down to Lake Victoria, I was shocked at the pathetic state I found the lake in. It was deeply emotional for me. And for a moment, I asked myself, why? The fish count had decreased from over 480 in the 70s to only 50 types of fish. Fishermen had lost their jobs. Waterborne diseases skyrocketed. And I asked myself, what could art do? Or what could I do as an artist? A quick flashback to West Africa, where I went to work at Festival Sule Niger in Mali, where the Bambara people celebrate River Niger through music, dance, song, movement, and sound. The Bambara people are largely farmers. And they practice organic farming, ensuring that they do not harm River Niger. Even the people in Segu town, which is the Bambara, they are actually recognized by UNESCO. Their town is recognized by UNESCO because it's a rich heritage, pumping millions into their economy while protecting River Niger. So I was inspired to set up cultural activities with similar impact at Lake Victoria. And 
to think of a festival that would combine art and environmental action and make people start protecting the lake selfishly. And I went on in my imagination journey in my head, and the next thing I thought about is how art would unpack complex environmental issues for local people to access this important information. My village people do not understand what climate change means. But they certainly understand that their actions are destroying the environment. But that needs to be communicated to them in a way that is meaningful. And through art, it is possible. So I founded NAM Festival and registered the organization in 2015. And we went on to organize festivals, bringing people close to the lake, hoping that they will see the issues like Victoria was facing. We went on to work with artists and the judicial service of East African community, bringing them to a forum that gave back to our hashtag, Justice for Lake Victoria. And we made contact with high-level decision makers. But unfortunately, I failed as the captain because we did not have proper follow-up mechanisms and monitoring. We could not sustain the activities so I went on in search of opportunities that would build my capacity and my team. And it is in this course of time that I bumped into Kantari. And when I came to India, I realized that my campus sits right next to Lake Vilayani, facing similar issues as Lake Victoria. I put together a Solidarity campaign now titled My Lake, My Future, Save Lake Velayani, which was targeting over 200 volunteers to set out and clean Lake Velayani every Saturday afternoon, one week at a time. These are the lessons of sustainable change that I'm taking with myself back to my community to actually build a team of volunteers to start cleaning the lake while using the waste materials to develop art installations from waste materials and using hyacinth to come up with crafts. We will also work closely with women and youth to lead monitoring teams that will actually look after the beaches we hope to transform. Now, according to the UN 2018 report on world water development, they project by, by, that by the year 2050, the numbers will double up to 7 billion of those who do not have clean water access or those who, do not, or those who face water scarcity. Now, the people who will be worst hit, imagine, are from Africa, Latin America, and Asia. Simply because their rivers and lakes have been polluted since the 1990s, and this is not getting any better. If we do not act, then we will lose our water future. We can save ourselves from a possible third world war brought about by the crisis of water. It is possible. There are many lakes in India and all over the world that have been restored and reborn because of action. We can do this. This dream is possible to see a clean, fishable, swimmable Lake Victoria. Lake Belandu, which is exploding into flames every now and again, can be restored. It is possible. Today in the morning, I received very sad news that China is entering or negotiating an agreement with the East African community to settle their debts and be given Lake Victoria for 230 years. Please, I have one simple request I put to you. Just those of you who believe that you will be around in the next 30 years, or those of you 
who believes that you will have your loved ones in the year 2030. Repeat after me these four simple words. My lake, my future. My lake, my future. Come on. My lake, my future. My lake, my future. Thank you. Because one wise man said, if we, one wise man said, that we do not inherit this land from our forefathers, but rather we borrow it from our children's children. We can pull together, surely, and give it back better than we found it. Thank you.